control structures, sequence, selection, and iteration. Control structures are the foundations of programming, being used in combination to develop functional software applications. The three control structures which are used as these foundations are that of sequence, selection, and iteration. So firstly, we're going to take a look at sequence. Okay, and this control structure basically represents the order of steps which we're going to be using in our algorithm. Obviously, steps have to be in a specific order to make logical sense and execute the actual changes to data in an appropriate manner. In pseudocode, the steps are placed between the keywords of begin and end, which are accompanied by the name of the program or subprogram. Okay, so if it's an addition program, okay, it might say begin addition program. And then when the actual program ends, it's going to say end addition program. All right. And basically, it reflects the logical order of steps that need to take place for the actual program to run correctly. So in my addition program, I've obviously got to get number one, get number two, then add the two numbers together and then display the numbers on screen for a user to actually see the result. If I do those steps out of order, my program is not going to make sense. And you kind of see that in my image here. Okay, and it's obviously a snippet from a flowchart, but obviously we've got to get the inputs from the user. Okay, we then do one process to that input data. We might do another process to that input data, and then we display an output. Okay, we can't display the output before we get the input, and the output might be meaningless if we put it before the actual processes as well. So having a logical sequence obviously is very important when creating our actual programs. The next control structure we're going to look at is that of selection. Okay, and this control structure is used within a program in order to make a logical decision. A choice is made in selection based on user input in response to a condition. So a condition means there has to be some sort of element satisfied. It could be being greater than a specific value or it has to be equal to a specific type of text for a condition to be satisfied. Okay, there are two types of selection uh, used uh, in scenarios. There's that of binary selection where there are two choices and that's basically whether the condition has been met and if it's not met, it will go down another path. And then case selection, which is a multi-way selection, okay, which essentially relates to multiple pathways based on different criteria being satisfied. Okay, you can see my little flow chart there on the left. I have, have my decision diamond there. All right, and then from there, you can see if the condition is satisfied in that decision diamond, there's a true path and there's a false path. And that's the binary selections going down two different paths and doing two different processes based on the condition being satisfied. So that image there reflects a binary selection, okay, and allows us to make choices within our program. The final control structure we'll look at is that of iteration or repetition. Okay, and it refers to a loop that allows several steps to be repeated until the condition is satisfied. So the condition might not have been satisfied the first time we've logically got to that point in our program, but it will repeat the steps associated with the loop until the condition is satisfied. Now, a condition needs to be established for the loop, otherwise it is capable of repeating itself infinite amount of times. And that's obviously a big error within programs because it means it could potentially freeze or you can't progress in your program. Okay, so there always needs to be a way that our steps are logically organized that we can exit the loop. Okay, and that it still allows us to go ahead with our program. And obviously there's an error in place if it's not reading our data correctly and keeping us within the loop. Okay, the steps that are repeated are known as the body of the loop. So we obviously will have our diamond, as you can see there on the image on the right, and then it loops through a series of steps, okay, as a part of its loop. Okay, so the diamond isn't just the loop itself, it's the steps that are affiliated with the light with the loop that is pushing back to previous steps within the program. Okay, so that is the body of the loop. There are three types of repetition. There's pre-test repetition, which is known as a guarded loop, where the test takes place at the beginning of the loop, and potentially you can avoid the loop steps if the criteria is satisfied straight away, which is why you would use a pre-test uh, uh, loop in this case. Then there's also a post-test loop, where you have to do the steps uh, within some of the steps within the loop at least once, okay? And you go through it, and then it tests the condition at the end and to see if the criteria has been met. And then you can potentially exit. If not, you're going to be looped back to the previous steps and have to do them again. And then the final one is a for next loop, okay, where there are specified amounts or a criteria related to how many times the loop will take place, okay? And uh, some sort of formula is established there in that case. But basically, that's repetition. We're going to be repeating steps in this case and repeating them until this condition is satisfied. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of control structures. That of sequence, where we need to have a logical order to our steps within our program. 
selection where choices can be made within our program, uh, branching our program down different parts based on a condition, and iteration where we'll be looping steps potentially multiple times until a condition has been met by a specific user when using our program.